Welcome back. And with me again for day number two is Mr. Sean, our friendly realtor. Thank you, Sean, for coming along and joining us yet again today uh, to answer more questions. He's given up a lot of his time to help us. So really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Sean. And uh, let's start away with uh, the questions. And the first question is, how do you do a proper rental agreement? What should be included in complete rental agreement in Thailand? All right, so when you make a rental agreement, it's of your best interest to include as much as information as you can. So you should include your name, the tenant's name. Right. You should include both of your passports inside. Mm -hmm. So you got uh, so it would be a copy of the owner's passport as well as your copy of the re renter's passport. Exactly. Okay. It should include the house certificate. Okay. It should include me personally. I also put the title deed yes. of the condominium Great. inside. Uh, the day before the customer checks in, I usually staff. I send the staff to check all the furniture, so mm -hmm. they make a furniture list and right. we include it inside. What's included the in the in the, in the yes. property? So right. then, when the customer checks out, mm -hmm. we would just go to the list and check yeah. if there is anyone damaged. Yeah, very easy to do. And uh, yeah, basically as much as information as you can, and you need to state it very very clearly. Um, so let's say. We start like this. Mm -hmm. Beginning of the contract. Right. Sean. Right. Israeli. Yeah. Passport number. Okay. Is the tenant. Okay. Then we go to the next step. Right. Cooper, American. Passport number. Right. And then he is the owner. Okay. And then we go to. We should be very very clear. Sean, the tenant checks in on date. Right. this and this and that mm -hmm. and checks out on the date of this and this and that mm -hmm. he pays two months deposit right one month advance okay yes and yeah this is it then you put on up all the other conditions that you want to include so in pataya usually they make a condition with which is a penalty fee for somebody who doesn't pay on time okay so let's say we agreed on a certain day where you have to make your payment uh-huh let's say it's on the number five any day that you miss after the number five it's a penalty of 500 baht which we take off per day exactly per which day we take off your okay. deposit that you pay mm -hmm. that protects the yes. owner yeah uh, there is another condition that uh, we use is that the customer is responsible for anything that happens inside the room during his stay right of course unless it's uh i don't know third act of god which is like a natural disaster or something okay <laughs> uh, you know all of these conditions i mean i could go on and on but mm. i think it's easier that if we have a customer i would just show him so the I more details in the contract yeah. the better that yeah. the better it is for both of you for, for the renter you. you and the owner yes yeah, so let's say if somebody decides not to work with me but works with another agent mm. i think it's uh, very important for you to include all of this information inside so yeah. there is no any mistakes and you should have an english copy of course yes yeah definitely have an english because copy. i know some uh, thai agents that would more only make a Thai, thai copy, copy and you have yeah. no idea what it says and you have no idea what it says yeah. it should be in english and thai yeah so there you For go if english you're going to sign a contract yeah. in thailand make sure you have an english copy uh in there should be a copy of your passport the owner's passport a copy of the title deed for the property as well yeah uh, checking dates checkout dates yeah and itemized listing of what's inside the property that you're going to be renting yeah. be it a condo or a house yeah and it should also have the address the building name um and all of that in exactly. the contract as well yeah yep fantastic and um sean is responsible for doing all that so there you go if you're going to be renting a property out here use somebody that you know has the expertise to do all of that and if they don't give it to you um, then walk away is my advice. Just walk away because you're not protected and go to a reputable agent such as 
Sean here. I've used them several times for our subscribers have gone to them and everyone's come back giving you a glowing appraisal and saying that you did an absolute great job. So thank you for that, Sean. Moving along to the next question. Do you need a special power of attorney to rent out somebody's property for them? So not necessarily. I don't think a uh, power attorney is necessary for this situation. You need a, usually you need a power attorney if you want to sign instead of the owner and okay. he's not here physically. Right. So what I usually do is I just find a customer. Mm -hmm. I may, usually I make an agency agreement between me and the owner, of course. Right. Yes. After I so finish, you have a contract between you and exactly. the owner. Exactly. Right. The details, my commission and everything. Yeah. And then I find him a customer. Mm -hmm. And when the customer likes the room, we establish a contract. Mm -hmm. I just make the customer sign. Right. He signs the contract. And then I send online. To the owner and the owner signs? The owner signs and oh, just... great. Yeah. Yeah, so everybody's on the same page. Exactly. So you're just yeah. the middleman. You get the owner to sign the paperwork and the tenant so they know that the owners agreed for that property to be lent right. out um, on those dates at that price. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely love that. What is your responsibility as a realtor uh, renting an owner's unit property? So... Of course, my responsibility is to find him somebody reliable. Somebody reliable. Yes, and make his mind worry-free mm -hmm. as much as I can, not to bother him about anything that I can take care of mm -hmm. myself. Yeah, so you're there to make sure that he doesn't have any problem tenants, yes. that they're keeping the place you know, in a paying reasonable condition, paying on time. Paying electricity on time, water but, on time. Yeah. Yes, and worry-free as much as I can, as much as I can make the owner worry-free. This mm -hmm. is my job. This is right. what I do. And just keep the money coming in. <laughs> just keep the money coming yeah, in for the owner. It. That's it. You're doing a great job. Do you do the TM30 for the renters? We covered that a little bit yesterday. Yeah, right. Yes, I do. Uh, I do it myself. All I need is just the title lead and the house certificate, uh -huh. which are, we already included inside the contract, and I can basically do it myself. Okay, so what is a TM30? TM30 is a report of a foreigner mm -hmm. who is staying inside your room. So right. let's say you're a foreigner staying in Thailand, you need to be reported during 24 hours if you stay in the inside some place mm -hmm. let's say you're a foreigner who is doesn't have a place right but you're a tourist uh-huh just so you know every hotel that you go the hotel reports tm30 for you ha is required to make a yeah. tm30 for you exactly and that's just proof of where you're staying exactly is there a charge for uh the tenant uh for a tm30 no so it's there free, of, no charge. Charge. free, free of, of charge free of charge okay Fantastic. That's something that Sean takes care of for you. Um, if you're renting for someone like Airbnb, you may struggle and have to do the TM30 yourself. And it is a uh, hard process if you don't know what paperwork is involved. So uh, get with a good agent or a, um, for example, a realtor like Mr. Sean here, or you can go to an immigration agent if you're having problems with that side of things and they can take care of the a TM30 for you. But hotels, they do it for you automatically. And uh, it is a slip of paper that you're required to have in your passport a proof of where you live. Just to make it clear, mm -hmm. it's uh, something that the owner has to do. The owner? The owner has to do it. It's not their responsibility, but of course, it's uh, something good to know mm -hmm. that you can remind your agent once you check in the room, mm -hmm. you got to remind him, please make a TM30 for me. Uh -huh. I personally do it, but there might be agents who don't do it. Yes. And these are the people that you need the reminding of. Right, right. Because yep. if not, it's important. You will pay a penalty of 1,900 baht. For not doing the TM30? Yes. Okay. So let's say you check in a condo. Mm -hmm and you know you didn't nobody reported you mm -hmm. they would just check in your passport when you go let's say you want to go uh, to do a visa or something and you go to immigration yeah 
they would ask a TM30, they will just open up your passport, then they will open up the computer, they will say, ah, okay, Sean came to Thailand on number five. Mm -hmm. Now is number 10. Where is this TM30? Where, is the TM30? Why has Where have you it? been? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so 1,900, so save it's yourself. Yeah, yeah, don't pay that fine. That. So that is about $60 uh, there for you. What is the average rate for electricity and water? Is government rate the cheapest? Yes, it is. It is the cheapest. Some condominiums, they have their own meter, mm -hmm. water electricity meter. So government is four. Some condos, they charge seven. Right. And another thing that you, you should know, let's say you own a room. Right. You have the right to request the meter of the government. Really? Yeah, it is true. You just go to the electricity company in Pattaya, mm. uh -huh. in Naklua. Right. And you go and you re request to change the meter. And you can change it to government. Wow, so you could be saving yourself 50% right off the bat. Yes, so for this kind of case, you uh -huh. do need a power attorney. <laughs> right, okay, so Let's that's where you would need a power yeah, of attorney. That's why, that, for these kind of things, I would uh, suggest to... From the owner. Yeah, give me a power attorney to do it. But uh, yes, this is also something important to know. You can change it to government meter. Right, so there you go. There's something I learn every day. Um, if you're renting a condo out here and you're paying a uh, not government rate, which is the lowest rate in, in Thailand, and you're paying above government rate, you can request to have a government meter put in so you're charged government rate. Right. Fantastic, loving it, loving it, loving it. What would you say uh, are the pros and cons in renting as a realtor? As a realtor, I would say that the biggest pro is that it's very easy. Mm -hmm. People are more likely to rent than buy. Yeah. So, of course, it's an easier way to make money. Uh huh. And the con is that, like I said, it's a commitment. It's a commitment until the customer checks out. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible. Right. It's a quick, easy fix, but it's a commitment for over one year that you have to be taking care of the customer. Right. That's my pro and con. That's your pro and con as well. Yeah. Yep, very good answer. What is your worst experience in this field uh, with the clients, owners and renters? I have to ask that question because I'm sure people are gonna be asking me in the comments down below. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I don't really have too much problems with owners. Most mm -hmm. of the owners I'm working with, they're overseas, they're buying condos for investment. They call me, Sean, can you help me rent? Yeah. As long as I keep the money coming in mm -hmm. and I don't bother them every two seconds, yeah. there is no problem. Uh, but I guess maybe from owner's side, it's a little bit unpredictable. So let's say, the owner wants to rent, mm -hmm. then he says, ah, no, never mind, I changed my mind. All Happened right. to me a couple of times, maybe another. And you've already brought people to go there, look, and you yeah. got people that want to move in yeah. and want to sign the contract, pay the deposit, exactly. and then they change your mind, so they just wasted your time and you've done it all for nothing. Yes, well, uh, you know, I'm happy, happy it's happening in rentals, but when it's happening during sales, it's uh, much hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Um, I would say that owners, I understand it because I'm owner myself. Uh -huh. You have kind of emotional um, connection to mm -hmm. the place you buy. It's right. your money, this is your property. You expect things to be clean and neat as much as you can. So some owners, they would say, ah, no, don't put stickers on the fridge or something like that. And the customer already puts the stickers of his wedding <laughs> and his mother's wedding. On the okay, <laughs> that's an odd request. I've not heard that one. Yeah, we got magnets all over our fridge from all the places we've been in the world. My yeah. wife, Darlene, she likes collecting them. Um, so, and um, yeah, for the tenants, uh -huh. the usual stuff like not paying on time, not paying electricity, water, there is some other cases where some tenants that would rent the room for me. 
mm -hmm. and then rent it to other people. So they would act as a third party. They would make a business. Sublet it. Yes, yeah. they would make a business, which is super, super illegal in right. Thailand. Like yeah. It's working without a work permit, basically. Okay. So, but uh, nothing to worry about. Now Pattaya is moving to face scan. Inside yeah, the I've noticed that a lot yeah. of the elevators and even to get into the buildings, they have a face scanner. Exactly. So you can't just like give the key card to somebody else and they come in because you have to get the face scanned by the juristic office yeah. and, you and they to have present. to upload it into the system and you got to show your tenancy agreement that exactly. you actually live there right. before they'll even put your face scan on the uh, on the security yeah. doors and the elevators to get up to your room yes and um, you know it doesn't just create a problem for me mm. let's say if uh, the police finds out that there is kind of daily rental business inside mm -hmm. the condominium so they would just charge the juristic office right wow so <clears throat> yeah this is nothing to worry about but personally this is like the worst, worst, worst case mm -hmm. that happened to me. And that wraps up today's show with Mr. Sean. Thank you again for coming on, Mr. Sean. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to talking to you again tomorrow, where we're going to go over sales and buying a property here in Thailand. The laws in regards to that. Can you buy a property here in Thailand? Do you require visas? What properties can you buy? What properties can't you buy? And um, selling those properties and how to go about it. What legal process is involved? And everything that you would like to know if you would like to consider buying for your future, for your retirement as an investment or to live in personally. So until tomorrow, wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you all. Take care.